when this arrived last week, um, it was officially released, the physical media, on Tuesday, December 27th, of course. Um, I saw all the reports on social media that they were at Walmarts across the country a week early. Um, you know, I don't know what happened there, but a lot of people got a hand on um, their hands on it before the holidays, which is cool. Um, this one arrived in the mail. Again, i got to give a shout out, Universal Home Entertainment. They hooked it up. They didn't have to do this. They're not paying me to say nice things about this. Anyway, it should go without saying. You guys already know how I feel about the film itself. I've already written my review and done that. What we're going to talk about tonight, primarily, though, is this actual release. Many of you have already watched all the bonus features. You probably watched it on digital before the physical release came out. Um, I didn't get the digital. I was waiting to get my hands on the physical. I'm, you know, the collector in me needs it. And, uh, you know, just the old school, um, just the old school movie, um, DVD, VHS, Blu-ray collector. I just got to have it. Plus I've got the other two most recent on the 4k. I just, um, so, um, that's what we are going to be spending the majority of the rest of this evening's live stream breaking into. I'm, I'm trying to show that the, the cover is embossed a, a little bit, which I appreciate. The suitcase is. I mean, you can see that Myers is, uh, I don't know if you can see it, but this is the Michael Shakes Things Up extended scene um, that is really an alternate version of uh, Corey's first meeting with Michael in the cave. And what I uh, really like about this scene and, and, and kind of prefer about this version, um, you know, it, it, it has Michael kind of roughing up Corey a little bit here, right, right in the beginning a little bit. But then, um, you know, Corey kind of makes a run for it. And we, we saw the first half of this a few weeks ago. We talked about it. It was released on Universal's official channel. And, um, but what we didn't see was this part after Corey falls down into this pit within the cave and it is revealed once and for all, not, not, uh, just hinted at, but definitely, um, revealed here that Michael has been getting busy with the business of killing um, throughout the, these last four years. Now, now I think we all kind of assumed that that was going on, and it's definitely hinted, and then you do see the, um, the missing girl billboard at a certain point, which um, certainly lends to that. And there's the Vagabond's statement. Um, I'm still in the process of reading Paul Brad Logan's novelization, which um, is really going more into a lot of those details. But um, what I love about this is that this doesn't leave it to the imagination. This, this you know, um, that lets us know right off the bat. And there you go. You can see some quick glimpses of some uh, skeletons, some corpses. So Michael's been doing his thing. Corey knows it instantly. And... Um, And I wish that this scene had, had been left in, honestly. Um, I, I, I think all of six of these deleted scenes, in, in my opinion, are, uh, are really worth keeping. And I was wondering, well, maybe the, uh, the studio or whoever wanted to keep it under a two-hour runtime, which is understandable. Um, but I did the math, and all six of these scenes are not, uh, would not even, it would not push it to two hours, I don't believe. Of course, I might be doing my math wrong, but <laughs> anyway. Um, but again, I like the confirmation that Michael has absolutely um, been killing. Again, the book is is going into some of those details. I'm like I said, I'm just past like uh, page 100 on my uh, read of the novelization. I've, I've got a little sidetracked. It's taking a little time, um, but. Um, I'm uh, right at the part of reading the chapter about uh, Nelson Christopher, a very interesting character. Another very uh, uh, scary, 
Halloween killer character uh, introduced in the novel that um, doesn't really, um, you know, get his due in the film. Um, and obviously a name inspired by uh, Mr. Nelson here tonight. Christopher says he made lots of skeletons and bodies too for the scene. Yeah, I bet. I, I imagine there were many, many um, more probably stashed throughout that cave that, that we don't even see. Um, now, I have to note, I guess this might be the elephant in the room when it comes to deleted scenes. Um, one of the deleted scenes that everybody might be looking for that is not included is the film's original ending. We do know, of course, you know, there was an, an alternate ending that was originally filmed. Um, when they went back for the, some additional filming, they, they shot the processional and so forth. Now, this was the same as with the 2018 film. Same same thing. You know, there, there's a, a, another ending that was shot. And maybe one day it will see the light of day. Maybe one day it won't. Um, my opinion, of course it will. Of course it will see the light of day. Eventually. In some some form. Some, some new re-release. Whether it's later this year for the 5th anniversary of the 2018 film. Or in five years from now for the 50th anniversary of everything. Or whenever. You know, it'll, it'll happen eventually. Um... But that is one of the things, again, going back to my interview with uh, Paul, which, uh, you know, again, I, I I really have thought a lot. Like I said, this is only my second rewatch or my, my first rewatch, my second watch period of the film. Um, so I ha I've had like months to, you know, I saw it opening night, Thursday night, October 13th here in the local theater. So I've had, you know, I wrote my review like within days of that viewing and I've, I've talked about it and thought about it for for months, and then I rewatched it, and then I dove into all these bonus features, and in the process, I'm, I'm reading Paul's novelization, and also having having talked to Paul, you know, um, a few months ago, and gotten even more insight into how he was writing this as they were shooting. So some of the ideas that you know were developing on set were going in here. Um, fascinating stuff all the way around. Um, now there is. Um, some some scenes that may not be quite as as uh damn i wish uh they were more keeperish as than that uh two two other ones are i definitely would but again all six of them honestly i if they were up to me i i would say you know uh keep them in but um that let's see what you guys are saying um Christopher says the missing person billboard picture is um, one of the producers, Laura. Yes, and I. That's funny you mentioned that. That is mentioned as well in the uh, in the commentary track um, that David Gordon Green does, which is an excellent commentary track. You guys might have heard me kind of bemoaning the fact that I, I was worried because I love the commentary tracks. I'm I'm speaking of tracks. I'm getting off track, but that's okay. That's how this normally goes. Um, the commentary track has five people participating in it. And sometimes when it's that many people, I don't get what I'm, I really want to hear, which is all of them talk, but I don't want to hear them talking over each other. Sometimes details get lost and sometimes it gets less. Not that I want to hear every technical aspect, but you know, I love the director's feature commentary and the writer's feature because you know, um, kind of the source material and all that. But um, I say my, my 4K review, um, the written version, the article version at HalloweenDailyNews.com, I said that for having what is seemingly a very crowded commentary track, it is remarkably doesn't sound crowded at all. Um, it, it is mostly David's voice talking, giving the type of information that I'm listening for it and, and love to hear. Um, but then the other uh, producers, and as well as Andy and Rowan are on there, um, they're offering some, some you know, few but very choice um cool uh, side notes and tidbits and anecdotes and stuff. It's, it's good, fun commentary. Um, I'll, I'll give you some of my highlights in a few minutes, but uh, let's get through these deleted scenes. Christopher loved the first ending. Yeah, I, I heard that um, it, it, we've heard some things about the first ending. I, I do believe that, um, you know, of course we all want to see it. Um, you know, what Paul mentioned is that sometimes, you know, it, it, I think maybe they were hesitant in 2018 to release it because they kind of don't want to cloud the idea that this is the, the ending, the official ending. And, you know, but 
we all know us fans, you know, we, we, this is the, especially with this franchise, especially with this, you know, we're, it's going to see the light of day eventually in some form, some special re-release. And, um, of course I'll have to own it and, and, and we'll all enjoy seeing it. Um, I have no doubt, um, whether or not we'll ever get an alternate cut now, that, that would be interesting. And again, there's six deleted scenes total. This one is called Jones Bunny Slam, and it's it's not a whole lot to it. It's an extended version of Lori's confrontation with Corey's mom. And, and this scene is in the theatrical cut. This one just goes literally just a couple seconds longer. But what it shows is Corey's mom, Joan, uh, slamming one of her... her little bunny figurines to the ground in anger and then it just really illustrates even more so her simmering rage toward Lori and something that um that is also discussed in the commentary track and and that I certainly picked up on even more so in my rewatch of the film what is is really sort of Haddonfield's uh mass victim shaming of Lori in a way, you know, they're all kind of, you know, mad at her and, and, you know, maybe not entirely unjustifiably. So from their point of view, of course, but, um, speaking of Joan, Corey's mom, again, going back to that amazing novelization and we're, we're going to have a couple weeks of Michael Myers Mondays devoted just to that when I'm completely done and ready to give you my full book report on that. But, uh, but man, they they go into a lot of Corey's history and and his mom's twistedness and yeah, she is just messed up and and a big reason for why he's so messed up. Um, yeah, the novel goes into a lot of a lot of fascinating things. So again, this scene it's not really necessary. I understand why they cut it, but um, you know, again, I mean, you know, I don't think it certainly hurts or takes anything away by keeping it in. I wish they had kept it in. All right. Um, let me pull up the uh, next scene. And you guys feel free to chime in uh, if you're watching this on a replay down in the comments below what your thoughts are on these deleted scenes. Uh, do you think they uh, bring very much to the film? Or, uh, you know, are you are, do you think it's a wise choice to have deleted or uh, not used the extended version of these scenes. Next up is about 30 seconds of a uh, quick little sequence right after Corey and Michael have visited Nurse Deb, played by Michelle Dawson. Check out our interview. Um, and Dr. Mathis. And um, Corey has rocked his, what I love is his awesome uh, kind of his coming out party. It's his scarecrow mask, man. And um, and and Christopher, I I love the the scarecrow mask. Um, I love the look at it. Love love the look of it. And um, but I talked to Paul. I love the choice too of the classic old school Halloween iconography of their masks being those of Corey and Allison being a scarecrow and a black cat. I think that's that's beautiful. But the, the look of them, and all I got to say is, come on, Trick or Treat Studios, where's those scarecrow and, and black cat masks? Sue and I, my wife and I, we're, we're going to be rocking them every year. Um, but so this scene, Corey reflects upon himself. It's just a few seconds of Corey in the bathroom. And, um, you know, he's kind of on this this high. I think I said it in my uh, 4K review. It's it, it This scene really hits home that after... That uh, what I call the Mike and Corey tag team scene, for lack of a better term. But it is one of my favorite scenes. I told Michelle this. James says it's his favorite kill because um, Bob is his favorite all-time kill from, from the original film. And so this is his favorite kill, um, his tribute to Bob. And, uh, and, and so I love the whole scene. I, I think it, it, and on the rewatch especially, um, this part here is especially brutal as Corey is stabbing away. And this... this deleted sequence um does give us some some quick little glimpses of of some of that mayhem and then you know he's he's feeling so so kind of high and, and on this newfound high about that and then you'll see there's there's some quick glimpses of uh you know allison as well and and his growing um almost obsession with her now and it's it's all kind of twisting together and um and it into this what's going to be this this epic Halloween night. And this scene 
It's called Ronald's Stuck at Work. And again, it's, it's, it's expendable. It's the most expendable of these six, easily. But uh, I love the character of Ronald. And um, this just makes him even more likable. The fact that um, he's lying to Joan, to, to Corey's mom, saying he's busy at work and won't be home for dinner. And, um, and really, he's just sitting here with a glass of wine watching Hard Target. <laughs> and um, it just makes me like him even more. And again, some of the stuff I'm, I'm reading about him in, in the book... Um, even, even his gift of the motorcycle to Corey is expanded upon slightly, ever so slightly in the novelization. And it, and it really just makes Ronald the, the kind of, kind of hapless, you know, stepdad, um, even more likable and sympathetic. And, um, I'm that much more sad, uh, when, when he's got to go, um, and being a stepdad myself, you know, Hey, you know. Love, love seeing a stepdad who's who's not the asshole in the family. <laughs> yeah, that would be Joe, the mom, in this case. Now, these are the two that absolutely, I'm just, ah, I don't know why they would have cut them. This first one, though, is just a few seconds extended of the character Margo's death. And you guys remember the character Margo. Um... She's played by Joey Harris, and hopefully you've watched my interview with Joey Harris. Um, and in that interview, she did talk a little bit about her original death scene, and that what we saw in the movie was not exactly the way it, um, you know, it was originally conceived. And so this deleted scene gives us uh, a much more clear idea of exactly what she was talking about. Now, I love this shot here of of of. I'll call him Corey Myers, right? <laughs> this is Corey Myers, right? I, I, I mean, this has got to be the coolest Corey Myers shot there is, right? Um, but this is what I'm talking about, and and this is why I'm glad we've got Christopher in here uh, for this little bit uh, right here because this this is um, some beautiful work. Let me just just try to pull up. A still here. Um, okay, pause and um, get ready. If you haven't seen it, here's a still of uh, the extended version of Margot's stomp, fence stomp to the face. Ah! Yes! <laughs> And she even says something in this clip, something like, say something, you ugly son of a bitch, or something like that. And it's kind of like the final thing that makes him stomp. Not like he ever wasn't gonna, I don't think. Um, but, uh, and, and and she mentioned in our interview, you know, how they did kind of, even with, with some of her ADR in post, they were, they softened her character a little bit. And she is the one of the four bullies who is more sympathetic to Corey and, and kind of, you know, I, I call her in, in my 4k review, she's the, the bully with a conscience and, uh, Joey kind of, kind of previewed that for us where I talked to her. I hadn't seen the movie yet. And, uh, she had only just watched the premiere the night before. Um, but, um, very thankful that this is included. This is one of the best of the deleted scenes. And, um, yeah, just a shame that it's, it's not in the theatrical cut. I mean, I don't, I don't know why. This is beautiful work here, though. I got to say, this is awesome <laughs> um, and just disturbing. All right, we're going to get that off screen now because that's disturbing. And, um, and then we're going to go to to the, the last one here of the deleted scenes, which um, is my favorite. And, um, again, just a, a, a head scratcher why it was deleted. I, I'd love to hear the, the reasoning. Um, but again, as I've said, just very thankful that, uh, we get to see it here. This other deleted scene is, it's called Joan's Recipe for Disaster. And we got the build up to it in the actual movie. Um, again, it's, it's. Corey, he's feeling his high, 
doing the whole Corey Myers bit at the junkyard, and then he's like, "Yeah, you know, I'm I'm riding high on on this. Yeah, there's somebody else. I I need need some attention, some Corey Myers attention." He goes to his mom's house. Now again, the book has has already prefaced what a monster his mom was and how she really you know really abused him and and probably more mentally than physically, but you know, um just just was really kind of a monster and she's obsessed with these little bunny figurines by the way too they're all over um and that's that's talked about quite a lot in the book and delved into in in de great detail in the novelization and so when she slams one of them in that deleted sequence um earlier after talking to Lori out of frustration and rage um that's a big deal because th that's kind of one of the things she loves and this is a big deal when all of them get destroyed in this epic death scene which again it's mind-boggling why it was cut out because i mean we know it happens we it's a great build-up Corey opens the drawer and gets the knife it's it's uh, you know reminiscent homage straight out of 78 and young michael doing it and you know very fitting that that was young michael doing it in the kitchen to kill his sister you know or this is a Corey myers kind of a young Myers uh, doing it not to kill his sister, but his mom. You know, lot, lots of parallels, as always, in, in this whole trilogy. I, I, you know, I love all the parallels and, and the homages and the, and the shout outs. But this sequence goes on. And as Corey stalks his mom, there's trick or treaters outside. And you hear them singing that familiar jingle, the very first thing you hear from the opening of the 78th film. So there's that happening outside. And then when the door doesn't get answered because Joe didn't get up to get it and Ronald's at work watching Hard Target. Um, and, well, now he's actually dead. But, uh, and, you know, Corey's getting down as Myers. The kids are getting rowdy outside. So as the stabbing and the stabbing and the stabbing commences, the kids commence to smashing pumpkins and throwing toilet paper and just other general All Hallows mayhem outside of Joan's house. Um, this is a violent, intense scene. Um, it's a character that I don't think watching the movie alone, we despise her as much as we should. Um, having, you know, again, reading the novelization now, Yes, she has this coming, um, and, 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 you know, it's a, it's a character kind of getting her, uh, twisted justice, um, you know, which, which Christopher and, and others on the, uh, DVD, uh, and Blu-ray on the disc bonus features discuss that each of Corey's kills are, in fact, you know, while Michael is notoriously random and also, almost supernaturally precise with a wicked sense of humor. Corey's kills are not random. They are planned. They are all have a twisted sense of justice to them, you know, at least in his mind. And, and if we're on his side, which a lot of this film is, at least I am watching it, um, you know, there is some, some twisted justice to this. Of course, his kills, though, are not supernaturally precise. In fact, the opposite. They're very sloppy. They're very messy. Um, and Christopher uh, talks about that in, in the featurette. Um, and and I, I love the contrast. You know, I, I love seeing somebody trying to kind of do their best Myers, but, you know, acting more out of rage rather than, you know, the, the classic Myers pure evil. Um So this is just a, a, a great scene, if you ask me. And the icing on the cake is that it is loaded with Hallowsphere, that almighty Halloween atmosphere that I'm always looking for. It's loaded with it, with the kids outside, and, and they're, they're singing the song, and they're trick-or-treating, and then they're smashing pumpkins, and, and they're chanting, candy, candy, candy. Oh, my God. It's great. It's great. Um... <clears throat> so that's my favorite of the six deleted scenes and the most inexcusable to be removed. But thankfully, we can at least watch it now. And, you know, you, you can edit your own um, extended cut as um, as some of you will, I'm, I'm sure.